Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 14778 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revision to the business programme for today. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 14778. Moved. Thank you, Minister. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 14778, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question number one, Alex Johnson. <coughs> to ask the Scottish Government whether it has determined the number of homes that are immediately available to house refugees in Scotland. Minister Margaret Burgess. Of the refugees expected to arrive in the UK before Christmas through the, the Syrian refugee resettlement programme, Scotland is expected to take around one third. This is a testament to the work of the members of the Refugee Task Force and all our partners around Scotland. Local authorities are responsible for identifying accommodation for refugee households. Local authorities that will be welcoming refugee households have identified housing as part of their ongoing preparation. They will also be ensuring that other services are ready to support the wider needs of refugee households. As co-chair of the Accommodating Refugees subgroup, I am very aware and welcome the great lengths that local authorities have taken to ensure that accommodation and support is in place for refugee households. Alex Jones. I presume the Minister has included Butte House in the numbers that are available, given the First Minister's uh, declared intention to provide accommodation for a refugee. However, there it is the case that many communities across Scotland want to be part of this process and look forward to welcoming refugees. Yet there are at the moment an estimated 173,587 households on the local authority or common housing register lists. And with waiting lists to that extent, is the Minister confident that that she will be able to allocate uh, refugees around Scotland in such a way that will achieve a fair distribution and avoid that terrible error of putting them all in the same place and the pressures that that may bring about. Minister. Uh, what I would say to members is that local authorities from across Scotland have all uh, very much indicated their willingness um, to accommodate refugees. And it is up to local authorities who work directly with the Home Office to determine uh, the best accommodation for refugees because it's not just about the accommodation I would have to make that very clear and um, it's about finding housing houses and the, the other services are available for the refugees but we are um, very confident through the, the task force subgroup that I co-chair uh, that across Scotland uh, there will be refugees taken into local authority areas across Scotland and all will be accommodated and have support services to go with that accommodation. Alex Jones. Uh, at the moment, the Minister, along with other political parties, are making plans for how they will uh, construct more uh, social and affordable housing uh, in the time of the next Parliament. Is there any way at this time that the Minister could make a commitment that those local authorities who have made dug deepest, who have the biggest waiting lists and who yet are willing to do their part, will be given an appropriate level of support to ensure that additional houses can be built in these areas during the course of the next five years? I think the Scottish Government and the First Minister has very made, made, already made very clear our commitment to increasing uh, housing across all tenures in Scotland, and we continue to do that. And as I said in my earlier answer, that it's local authorities who work directly with the Home Office uh, in accommodating the refugees. And our responsibilities to the people of Scotland uh, don't prevent us from taking the right approach and that humanitarian approach in terms of housing and housing refugees. So we're looking very carefully and working closely with COSLA and with our 32 local authorities to ensure that refugees are accommodated across Scotland in good accommodation uh, as any other person on the waiting list in Scotland would, would expect. Bruce Crump. Uh, thank you, Mr. Officer. I wonder if the Minister would agree with me that the approach taken by Stirling Council by holding recently a summit of all interested parties in this Stirling area about how to provide services for those refugees who will eventually uh, arrive including registered social landlords, private um, landlords and the, and the council 
own area of, of housing, working together to try to come to the appropriate um, conclusion about how best to provide services for refugees in the future. I would recommend that approach to others across Scotland. Minister. Yes, I very much uh, welcome the approach of Stirling Council and other local authorities across Scotland and community planning partnerships are taking that same approach about the community coming together, housing services, voluntary agencies, members of the public all looking together about how best we can support refugees when they come to Scotland. Patricia Fergus. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I wonder if the Minister would agree with me that one of the uh, very welcome changes in this round of resettlement of refugees is that so many local authorities are coming forward and that it isn't only Glasgow City Council that is responsible for rehousing refugees, as has been in the case in the past, because no other local authority would come forward. And does she welcome the efforts being made by those local authorities across the country, but also the efforts of organisations such as the Mary Hill Refugee Integration Network, which provides such wonderful support both to the new members of our community coming in, but also to the existing community and make sure, whatever it can, that those relationships remain harmonious going forward. Minister. Yes, I very much uh, support what the, what the member says there, and I do welcome that local authorities across Scotland are, are looking at uh, taking um, refugee families into their communities. And I think that, that Glasgow have, has shown local authorities have learned a lot from what Glasgow City Council has done in the past and Glasgow Housing Association, and that's been now shared with other local authorities, and they're confident that they can provide the services that are required and the support networks such as they have in Glasgow. Thank you. Question to Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the awarding of the Saltire Prize for Marine Renewables. Minister Fergus, <coughs> Uh, Presiding officer, the Saltire Prize Challenge Committee, the independent committee that oversees the prize, has been keeping the prize criteria and competitive progress under review. It is currently considering options for reshaping the prize to better reflect the circumstances of the wave and tidal sectors. Trade body Scottish Renewables is supporting the Scottish Government with the review and has convened a focus group of industry representatives and other marine energy experts to discuss revised prize options. A report with the conclusion of the group's discussions uh, is expected next year. This will then go to the Saltire Prize Challenge Committee for consideration and approval. Liam MacArthur. Can I thank the Minister for that answer? There was a time, Presiding Officer, when Ministers were all over this prize. Barely a month went by without a press release or indeed an invitation from the former First Minister uh, to join him at the Great Hall at Edinburgh Castle. But we haven't heard anything this summer or autumn, even though a decision has been taken to dismantle the prize. We had to learn that from the small print on the government's website. I absolutely understand the pressure that marine renewables is under right now. Companies are closing or scaling back involvement in the sector. So doesn't it make sense for the minister to say today that he will bring forward the money which has been put aside for the Saltire Prize and use it this year to protect the fledgling industry? Here, here. Oh, well, uh, first of all, I, I haven't uh, put out a whole flurry of press releases. I've been too busy getting on from my job uh, to answer that. Uh, secondly, uh, I, I did think, Mr MacArthur, who, who has uh, pursued these, these matters as a supporter of marine energy, would acknowledge that in setting up Wave Energy Scotland with £14 million budget, we have made a very solid commitment to supporting the marine sector. And uh, thirdly, of course, it's absolutely right to review uh, the prize now in the, li in the likelihood that it cannot be, be won because of the criteria set. That is what is happening. Uh, and the industry is leading the recommendation about how to reshape the prize in a way which achieves the objectives of the prize, uh, uh, but also uh, doesn't uh, unduly uh, hit the taxpayer's pocket. So I hope that Mr MacArthur and I can continue to work together to promote marine energy where Scotland, particularly with EMEC in Mr MacArthur's own constituency, is recognised as a leader, as the world's only grid-connected, accredited testing centre of marine devices. Can I thank the Minister for that uh, further answer? And I certainly acknowledge his passionate commitment to seeing marine renewables playing a part 
in our uh, future energy uh, mix. But the Siltar Prize, as um, he has uh, just conceded, uh, will never be awarded. Companies are not far enough ahead in their development. So uh, the Minister has the opportunity today to use that money to help develop the industry further. It does seem to me that the choice for the Scottish Government is whether it prefers to save the reputation of the former First Minister or instead try to save the industry. And will he commit to use the money to save the industry in that way? Minister. Well, I've always been more interested in results than reputations, and the results in particular of uh, success in the marine sector. And in that regard, I'm delighted that Scotland is leading the way with companies such as Albatern, Nova, and uh, the Atlantis Corporation. And indeed, the Atlantis Corporation uh, is the architect of the world's largest tidal array, uh, which currently is being deployed, as Mr. MacArthur well knows, and whose success would give the most tremendous fillip to a sector that has had hard times, as the member well knows. In addition, as well as the headline prize, there are Saltar-related activities, the Saltar Prize Lecture Medal, the Junior Saltar Prize, which promotes activity and innovation amongst school children and students, uh, and the Saltar Prize website. Uh, and lastly, um, the prize was always anticipated as being awarded in 2017, and therefore, there has been no allocation to the existing budget in respect of meeting the cost of, uh, of paying out the prize. And therefore, we've achieved all the success, presiding officer, with none of the cost. Question number three, David Stewart. Thank you, presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it's had with Logan Air regarding safety, reliability and maintenance. Minister Derek Mackay. I met Logan Air officials on 15th of September 2015 and sought assurances about the reliability of Highlands and Islands Air Services. Logan Air officials accepted that their engineering support wasn't good enough and have embarked on a significant programme of improvements and hope that passengers will start to see the benefits of these changes as soon as possible. Thank you, David Stewart. Uh, President officer, the Minister will be aware of cross-party concerns within the Highlands and Islands about the robustness of Logan Air services within the Highlands and Islands. Constituents have written to me this weekend expressing worries around the reliability of the services, which, as the Minister knows, are vital for business and tourism. Can the Minister raise these issues with the airline as a matter of urgency? Minister. Uh, yes, I would uh, agree with uh, David Stewart on the issue of reliability. I had raised it specifically uh, with the operators in the past. I'm happy to do so again and ask for a progress uh, report on how their uh, plans were going. Uh, all members will be well aware that in terms of uh, the cost of airfares, the government's increased the subsidy and the support to 50 per cent. And I do expect um, enhancements around engineering. And Logan Air do have plans around this, and I want to see them realised because I do agree that the reliability issues uh, have not been uh, acceptable. And that point has been made by both uh, islanders, politicians and, and certainly uh, government. David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. The Pilots Association have also expressed concerns that aircraft have been returned to line in poor condition. Does the Minister share the pilots' view? Uh, well, I will go by what both pilots and the company has told me. And we should say we express concern around reliability but we mustn't put into question safety, because it is the case that no pilot will leave the ground unless they are convinced that it is safe to do so. And their trade union organisation has made that perfectly clear, that lo no Logan Air pilot would fly if they thought that an aircraft was unsafe. So this is certainly more of an issue about uh, reliability, and all the necessary checks are put into place uh, in terms of aircraft before they fly. Now, that may then have an impact on, unreli on reliability if uh, aircraft uh, departs uh, later than it should, but safety must never be compromised. And on that, we all agree, operator, pilots, politicians and communities. Tavis Scott. Presiding officer, can I assure the minister, sadly, that this is the worst it's ever been in the 15 years I've spent getting on a plane to and from uh, Shetland. Uh, I take and agree with his point about safety, uh, but would he undertake to speak and meet with the CAA, if that's appropriate to so do? Uh, will he undertake also to meet Stuart Adams, the chief executive of Logan Air? Because while uh, Stuart Adams is making best endeavours to improve things, on Sunday night at Sumbra, the Aberdeen plane went technical, the Glasgow incoming plane went technical. People are putting up with this every day, as David Stewart has rightly uh, said, we need to see some genuine improvements here. Yes, 
I, I would agree with Tavish Scott. That's why I had met with Logan Air. That's why I'll continue to meet with Logan Air and push them on the engineering commitments that uh, they've uh, made. And you know, what, uh, they have matters of commercial sensitivity, but they may be able to share their plans about investment in engineering that will address a number of these issues. In terms of the Civil Aviation Authority as industry regulator, as Tavish Scott is aware, aviation safety is reserved to the UK Government, but that certainly hasn't stopped me in raising any relevant matter with the operator, and I'll continue to do that because I think the issue it has it certainly it got worse, and I'll certainly do that everything I can from a Scottish Government Transport Scotland point of view to try and ensure that there's a more uh, reliable service. But I would want to say again that I do not believe that safety is compromised, and no one should scaremonger to that effect. And that hasn't happened today, but people should be reassured uh, around the service that's being provided. But we expect a better service, and that's the case that I'll put to the operators. Thank you. We have now moved to the next side of business which is a statement by Michael Matheson on policing. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions.